Good evening, and welcome to the second evening of the Creative Communities Culture Conference. This conference is presented by the Cultural Alliance in the Heart of Georgian Bay with the support of Rogers TV. My name is Cher Cunningham, and I'll be your moderator this evening. The Cultural Alliance in the Heart of Georgian Bay, which is the Beausoleil First Nation, the towns of Midland and Penetanguishene, and the townships of Tay and Tiny, would like to recognize that the region represented by the Cultural Alliance is located on land which is the traditional and treaty territory of the Chippewa of Lakes Huron and Simcoe, now known as Chippewa Tri-Council, which comprises Beausoleil First Nation, Rama First Nation, and the Georgina Island First Nation. This territory is within pre-Confederation Treaty 5, Treaty 16, and Treaty 18, and included within the Williams Treaties of 1923. We also recognize that the region is located on land which was once the territory of the Huron-Wendat and the historic homeland of the Métis Nation of Ontario. Our communities are home to a large and diverse community of Indigenous peoples. I'd like to thank the sponsors for this conference. The sponsors for this evening's session are Newton Street Art Barn and the Midland Cultural Center. We're very grateful to them for making this program possible and we hope you'll have the opportunity to thank them as well. We also want to express our gratitude to Simcoe County Tourism for conference sponsorship and Rogers TV for their technical support. As you know, the theme of this conference is obstacles and opportunities, finding the path to success. The theme of this evening's session is getting started on the path to success. This evening, we'll attempt to identify the obstacles and challenges facing the creative economy, both for individuals and for organizations. We'll also attempt to lay out some preliminary steps to confront and overcome those obstacles and challenges. We're aware too that current circumstances offer some unique opportunities for those in the creative economy. So we'll also try to address how to identify those opportunities and provide guidelines on how to recognize and benefit from them. For the first hour of this evening's program, we'll be featuring two, maybe three special panelists let me just have a quick look here. Let's see if we're all here this evening. So we have Anne Sutherland. Anne is a marketer, strategist, facilitator, and thinking coach. And we have Don Bourne. Don is a mentor and client service manager at the Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Center down in Barrie. Each of our panelists will speak for about five minutes to introduce our topic. Then I'll moderate a discussion with them about issues that arise from their presentations as we try to find that elusive road to success. At 8 p.m., we conclude our discussion and bring you into the conversation. We'll open up the dialogue to everyone and welcome your questions and comments. Our panelists will be standing by to engage with you. In that second hour, they and the other attendees will have a chance to identify other obstacles and challenge, challenges that might be getting you started on that path to success and perhaps some opportunities that you see as well. So let's get started. I'll call on each of our panelists to make an opening five minute presentation on the theme of this evening, getting started on the path to success. Our first speaker is Anne Sutherland. Anne is a marketer, a strategist, facilitator, and a thinking coach who helps teams think better together. The focus of her consultancy, New Thinking, and the Thinking Studio is to help leadership teams become more innovative, productive, and effective. Anne shared her expertise teaching innovation and design thinking for 13 years at OCAD University. I should have checked with you, Anne, if that's pronounced OCAD. And please begin. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Cher. Uh, so who came tonight looking for the answer? We all want answers, and that's really what's driving anxiety today. Certainty is what our human brains crave, and we all know that, well, nothing today is certain. Anything that you were sure of and the way you thought about your business, your organization, your craft, you can't rely on right now. There isn't a population or a sector, a government, who's clear on what's happening right now, let alone what's going to happen going forward, because we're all in new territory. So we don't have a crystal ball to chart a path forward. And I'm sorry to say that our brains are also getting in the way. You may struggle with getting your brain to function like it used to. Well, this is because our brains respond to a crisis. And it's a biological response. And it happens without our awareness. So you see on this slide, 
uh, information first reaches the oldest part of our brain. Uh, that's called the stem or what some people refer to as our reptilian brain. And this is a reactive response. Our reptilian brain's response to threatening stimuli causes our brains to focus and narrow on the threat at hand. And therefore you've heard that we fight, flight, or freeze. But once that physical threat is assessed, we respond then through our emotional brain, our limbic system. And this is where we process how we feel about the situation. We are not rational in these moments as we've not yet engaged our prefrontal cortex or the what we call executive thinking. Our brains are operating on a very ancient system designed to keep us safe from saber-toothed tigers, not necessarily for figuring our way out of a pandemic. So on a good day, humans don't deal well with ambiguity. So in a crisis, you can imagine, it's that much harder. Sure, we could move off the slide now if you're... Mm -hmm. The only thing is I can't turn off and on and off and on because it's got a bit of oh, a delay. So if that's we all right. Great. Okay. Uh, we're hearing those well-meaning messages like in this introduction of, you know, don't waste a good crisis. We've seen that in lots of responses. Um, but that would really require a thoughtful planning, not a reptilian brain response. So tonight I'd like to talk about how we can move forward even when our brains may be holding us back. The most effective way to deal with not knowing in a situation is to engage many viewpoints and then deliberately follow a critical thinking process. Each person comes to problem solving with a perspective. And you know we bring our worldview, ex our experience, our personalities, and our problem solving biases into every situation. And so when we have one perspective, we have one answer. But to get to new thinking, we need more than one answer. We also need to be aware of our thinking biases and really work together to be able to all upshift to our critical thinking capabilities. So let me break it to you. There's no one answer, there's no right answer, and there's no one right answer. We need to accept that there are very different ways to see facts, to understand the context, and to believe what is true. So if you are on the side where you see a six in this diagram, it's very challenging for the people who see a nine to be able to come together and see anything in an aligned way. We need to be able to accept this and still move forward to solve the problem and find the opportunity. So how can we confidently think our way through this situation and plot a path to the future? In my job day to day, I help teams think together. I use a process of inquiry to help people upshift to that critical thinking and doing so, I also challenge people to embrace what I call a beginner mindset. When we start without knowing, we can reimagine the future. So when we start without knowing, we can reimagine the future. And here are a few ways beginning, being a beginner will help. When you're a beginner, you listen to lots of voices. And in Catherine Nichols' keynote, she encouraged you to invite everyone in to contribute to your recovery. When you do that, remember to also look around and ask who's not been included? Whose voices are we not hearing? And seek those voices out. Beginners are curious. And so we can start with a blank page and we don't assume anything when we have that beginner hat on. One way our brains get in the way is when we crave certainty, we look for best practices. Um, with best practices though, come embedded conventions. Each category has them, and a curious beginner's mind will find them and break them. Why do cars have to be sold at dealerships? We assume up until now that live performances have to have been in person, or that paintings are sold in galleries. Instead, why don't we ask, what if I was starting fresh? What conventions would I bust? We are all held back by things that are considered to be sacred cows, and now's the time to reevaluate those. Curiosity leads a beginner to ask lots of questions, and by working through a series of questions, you can define a new value proposition. 
these questions will reveal the opportunity through these new eyes that you're being you're seeing as a beginner. I spend a lot of time with one question, and that is, what is success? You'll find that there are many definitions of success, and the answers will reframe the way you think about your goals. Poke and probe at these answers and ask, why is this important? Each time somebody clarifies and says what they think success is, say, why? Why is that important to you? Being clear on what you want to achieve and why it's important is core to your value proposition. The next question I go to is, who's key to that success? And this, you wanna identify all your stakeholders and their roles. Think about everyone who engages with your work, customers, staff, volunteers, partners, collaborators. And then with your customer in mind, ask, what is the offer? And what benefit does the offer provide? Ask, why does my organization exist? And why is it important to people? Think about what makes the work or the brand really special? Beginners are not familiar with jargon, so I like to encourage people to use plain words to express your organization or offer in these very simple terms. Describe what it is and what it offers, why that's important and for whom. It's really challenging, but you need to hold off on coming up with what I call the how ideas until these three points are clear. Once you know these, what, why, and who, you can then ask, what's in the way of us getting to that desired success? How might we overcome that? What are all the different ways we could make this come to life? Each one of these questions moves our brain into possibility thinking. And these questions are the tools we need to trick our brains to thinking beyond the pandemic. Asking key questions and looking at the situation with a beginner's mindset will help you move out of that fight, flight, and freeze mode and get past the feelings we're all struggling with about our current situation. With an articulated foundation of what, why, who, and how, you will not waste this crisis and you'll see new opportunity and have a map to getting started on your path to success. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Our second panelist this evening is Don Bourne. Don is an experienced small business owner. Don understands what it takes to launch, manage, and grow a business. He's a mentor and client service manager at the Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Center down in Barrie. He's also a business consultant for the South Georgian-based Small Business Enterprise Center, managing the starter and summer company programs. So Don, let's hear from you. Thank you, Cher. And Anne, wow, I loved it. <laughs> so hello, and thank you for asking me a part of this uh, timely and important conference. On Tuesday, I was listening to the keynote from Catherine Nichols, and she touched upon so many critical aspects of the creative economy, outlining the challenges that we're all experiencing. I'd like to share my entrepreneurial perspective on how we can search for opportunities, both now and post-pandemic. -pan post Catherine stated that the creative we bring into the world has a positive impact on the health and well-being in our society. If there wasn't a more crucial time that we all need creative intervention, Hi. Thanks. When we develop strong foundations in our business models, we're able to identify opportunities to grow and to thrive. As a business consultant, I start with the two main pillars that hold up any business. Who's our customer and what do we sell? Or a different way of saying this, what is the customer actually buying? Anne was talking about the value proposition. That's, that's speaking my language. As I only have five minutes, I can only speak to the philosophy, but a deeper dive would be recommended. Slide. We be begin with the who. These are the people that invest, buy, attend, and crave our creative. If we understand these people at such a personal level, we'll be able to find them, successfully engage with them, and create experiences leaving them wanting even more. So how do we get to know them so intimately? Slide. Start with what you already know. Talk with your past and present customers. 
perhaps make a few assumptions, then go out and validate. Through market research, we can define generational demographics, archetypes, influencers, habits. The list will be lengthy, but the more you know about them, the easier it is to connect with them. You may have several customer segments or distinctive groups in your model, and within each segment identified, you should create a target customer profile. This persona that you create represents the customers that buy from you the most, the most often. I know everyone can benefit from arts and culture. We're not saying no to anybody by creating a profile or a target customer. We're just starting with the people that are most involved. So now, now that we, yep, yeah, excuse me. So now that we are getting to know them quite intimately, what's next? Slide. The message. Do we talk about our features, our benefits? Do we talk about ourselves? And the answer is eventually, yep. Yeah. But first we need to engage them with the right message. Speak to what they care about. As you've been getting to know them so well, your profiling, the answers should come just a little easier. Oh, and by the way, the added benefit of knowing your customers so well is you can now reach them on the marketing platform you should be using to get your message into their world. Slide. We can create a compelling message through the value proposition. The statement will engage your target customer with the why they should entertain your creative. It goes much deeper than just benefits. It emotionally connects the customer to what you are providing. It tells them why they, they should invest in you. This is our opportunity to strike a chord so compelling that the potential customer will go, yeah, yeah, I want that, I need that. Creating your value proposition will take time. There's several tools out there to help you in the process, but I can assure you that your efforts will pay off in dividends. Slide. I'll give you a second to read this. This statement makes us all think about the customer's perspective even more. It forces us to be mindful of what they think and how they feel when it comes to what we are selling from the customer's point of view. It plays right into Anne's six and nine slide. It's you see the six, they see the nine. You need to come around onto their side and see the nine. We can, slide. We can amplify our marketability using these two pillars. We can create growth in our businesses by knowing and engaging our customers so well that we bring meaning to their lives while we ourselves can make a living. I know this is very businesslike, but if we wish to survive and thrive, we need to look at the opportunities and the tools that will generate sustainable re revenue for us while building a strong creative community. Thanks again for asking me to be a part of this event. Cheers. All right. Let's get off the PowerPoint and into the conversation. Um, fantastic and well-orchestrated information that I think built so well. Those visuals are so handy for tying it all together. And we're going to dive into maybe some examples as we move into the discussion on our topic. I think it's so interesting because what I've observed in a lot of my practice is that we get obsessed with new Right. And so when clients, when I work with clients are always like, how do I get the new customer? Who are the new people that I need to reach out to? What, you know, what's new? And I think what's really interesting and maybe Don can speak to it more is, is I always ask people to start with where they are, right? Who, as you said, Don, who are your existing um, clients, customers, partners, start with them. And as you know, we can mine information from that source. And then I think about it always as concentric circles out from that main group, right? And they have friends, they have family, they have connections that probably are like-minded to them. So tapping into that existing source is a really fundamental place to start. But as humans and marketers, we're always excited about new. And I think we overlook that a little too much. And that maybe, you know, this opportunity right now is where we dig into who we know already and how then we build those concentric circles out. Yeah. So, and Dawn, I think you speak very well to those same kind of fundamentals, um, not just the speaking directly to those existing clients that you have. And I think that's been a big challenge for a lot of our creators who aren't marketing already with email. They might be spending some time on Facebook. How are you going to reach out if you don't already have that email marketing system set up? 
No, it's a great question. Um, reaching your customers, I call it the three-legged stool, is knowing who your customer is um, so well that you create a message that engages them, the value proposition. And also knowing the customer allows you to identify the platform in which you can reach them, whether it be social media or an email list or print or the grocery line. Um, all three of those hold that stool up. And if anyone is deficient, then the stool falls over. Um, and you can go right back to what Anne said about the customers that you already have or the people that already invest or buy um, the creative, whether they're going to concerts or um, listening to music or buying art. Uh, if you're talking to them, even in the grocery line, having that organic conversation, it can be very informal but your objective is mining that information so that you can better understand um, the customer so well, so that you know what will engage them, what, what really turns them, uh, turns them on about uh, art or the creative, creating a message or create, even designing your, um, your solutions. I'm talking like a business person, I apologize. Designing the solutions around what they want rather than that's that six and nine. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to create yellow umbrellas and but the customer wants black umbrellas. So you're still creating umbrellas. You're just changing the color a little. Um, and I know in the art world, that's really tough because that's the creative part. You know, we want to create what you feel. So what you need to do is find the people that really, really appreciate um, and if you're talking to the person in the, in the grocery line or customers that you've already have, um, you'll be able to get that information and, and really fine tune your marketing uh, and your marketability and your messages. Now, I'm hearing something exciting in this that also plays into what Anne said about stepping out of that anxiety and the fear. Sometimes that idea of having to now do you know, person-to-person -person selling conversations, you're not talking about a selling conversation here. You're actually just talking about a chat. What, it, what are the kind of questions that you might put to that person or what plan could you put in place so that conversation isn't as scary and takes you out of that reptilian part of your mind and up into that prefrontal cortex so you're confident and you're trusting and you're creative? Having a script might help, I think. It could help. Um, I think creating the five top questions that you wanted to, to really get an answer about um, and then just going out and informally, just having a conversation uh, and it'll roll into, you know, eventually as you're talking about the weather or you know, COVID or whatever the case may be, you'll roll that question in and you'll get that information and it makes it much more um, uh, comfortable uh, because it is, as Anne said, it's the anxiety, you, you know, I, I got to go out and talk to people. Um, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm, I'm, I, I like my studio. Uh, I, I make my pottery and, and that's, that's okay. But people do talk to each other. I, I always use the grocery line because my mom used to do that on me all the time. She'd be go out and she would talk to people about my business to people. And I come from the creative world. Um, and, and I thought it was a little embarrassing, but she would always come back with really amazing nuggets of information. It's like, oh, wow, I never thought of that. I, I should probably think about making this product or, um, so it, it doesn't have to be formal. Yeah, yeah, I believe, Cher, you could script it, but not in the way that you've got, you know, 10 questions, you know, line by line, it's what are the main things that you need to know to make yourself more effective, more efficient in, in the business end of the world, because we don't want to take away from the creative. And that's the big argument um, and, and challenge for um, artists is we're, we're, we're talking about the business end of the stick. Sometimes people say right hand and left hand brain. Um, I, I don't buy that. I think we, our brains work. Uh, and Anne, Anne can speak to the brain, how it works. She's, she's the expert on it. But I think that we, we, we want to be creative. And if we're really honing in onto the, the business end of the stick, um, it takes away from uh, us being creative. So we, we, we avoid it. Um, I did. Uh, and and uh, I had to get past that. And it was just, it was really just through conversation. Um, and I know you talked about the fight or flight and, and so what are some of the um, strategies that you can work to get past that anxiety? Um, because it's, it's real, it's, yeah, boy, I, I felt it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that uh, you really have to tap into that curiosity that I talked about. Um, and I, <laughs> 
curiosity is creativity. Um, it's going to lead you to some interesting places. So I know it's scary. Nobody likes to cold talk to people about things. It's uncomfortable. But I, again, when I follow that curiosity, I'm always searching for the why. And so I try to tap into my inner two-year-old, three-year-old <laughs> to talk to people and ask them a question and then ask them why, why, why? And they say behind five whys is when you're going to really get to what drives and motivates people and, and get to deeper needs. Now, you don't want to sound like the toddler when you're interrogating people, but I'm just trying to encourage you to use that spirit that they are really searching for that answer and they're unabashed in the way that they kind of take it on, right? The other thing I think it's, yeah, introversion is hard. Talking about yourself is hard. Thinking about something beyond your own work is hard. So I always reach out to people who can be my ambassadors. Um, so your mom is a great example of that, right? So I would say to my five best ambassadors, they're not just your friends, but people who may be connected to you in some way and say, I'm seeking information. And here's what I'm really trying to uncover and then potentially leave it to other people to use their inquiry skills to dig out those answers and get back to you, right? Because we're not all comfortable doing that. But everything begins and ends with people. So you, you have to draw out and find ways to gather that information. Um, and those insights are there. Are we ready to hear them? And then will it help shape what we want to shape as a new value proposition? That's a, a separate thing, but really getting it started. So think about the talk over the backyard fence, the grocery line, those less intimidating um, places. The second thing I would say to you is look to the influencers in each of your category. Influencers are really making an impact today because they have found a medium and a way to talk to people and to connect with people and engage with people in a way that they're comfortable. So I would say the same thing to you. If you're comfortable talking on the phone, then call people. If you'd rather talk in person over a cup of tea, then do that. Or if you're comfortable emailing or you're comfortable talking through Instagram or Facebook, decide the channel also to help you get over that unease in trying to get to the information that you want. So as we look at the information that you do want, I mean, if we have people participating who just before COVID, they were building an audience, they were building a following, they were creating success um, because people were visiting galleries or people were attending events and now they're not, how do they find or determine how people want to consume culture now, how <laughs> their ideal client who may not be over the back fence right who may not even be in the local town want to consume that culture and i loved what you said about reaching out and i think that's one of those keys right if you can reach out beyond your little circle to mm -hmm. find those people so what are some ways of doing that well i think that it starts with prototyping and piloting and thinking of it from that kind of innovation mindset I go back to my, there's no one right answer. Sometimes we get in our head, my product needs to be like this and look like this. Don touched on that, right? Like I get very invested in what I created. And these times, uh, this moment is asking us to pivot and asking us to kind of maybe spin that around and look at that a different way. So I also challenge people to say, how do you see what I do? And really draw out the answers from how people see what you do rather than starting from, you know, the way I always say ideas, you know, they're little babies, they're gems that we try to hold dear to our heart and we don't want to release them out into the real world because we know it could be painful, but allow people to look at that and play with that with you and be open to what you hear because you may hear some interesting things to be able to connect with people in a way that you had never thought of before. And I encourage you, Don, would you have a story? I know you've worked with a lot of businesses who have gone through exactly this kind of thing where they thought they knew who they were and then did a, not even a huge amount of market research, right? They don't need to have a ton of money to throw at market research to change their understanding of what their business really created as a benefit for their clients. Yeah, yeah. COVID's really put people in a, in a position where they've had to pivot, where they've had to recreate or reimagine what it is that they're putting out in the market space. And um, there's there's a philosophy of design, test, iterate. So you know, you design something and put it out there and see what you know if it feels good with people, and if it does, then you build on it, you iterate, and you learn. It's like this upward spiral, um, and and that's very helpful. 
I like what Ann said about the, you know, getting out of your concentric circle. If you look at a bullseye, you know, you know, the people that are doing this, but getting them to ask outside of that or, or continually working um, uh, in, a, in a larger um, uh, uh, geographic range or, or, or even um, global at this point, I have people that are um, talking with people in, in Europe um, about their concept and ideas to see if it would be um, appealing uh, and, they're getting some really good feedback and it's just using the technology that we have now zoom uh coming into calls networking on on the virtual platform uh getting that type of information uh, has never been easier because of our connectivity through technology uh it's just figuring out what are the questions that you need to ask to figure out which direction you need to go to reimagine yourself um i find it um interesting in the creative world where uh, like art galleries, um, some of the um, solutions they're coming up with um, virtual evenings uh, where people are going or even virtual concerts. Uh, we actually had one the other day with, uh, with our team. Uh, we had to sing happy birthday. It wasn't a concert, but um, it, we, we found that there was some challenges with it, but we were able to come up with some really interesting solutions to, um, to connect. And, and that's what creative is all about. It's creating that connection in society. It may be different from what you were doing pre-COVID and it might be different post-COVID. Um, so just continue, I, I'm gonna go right back to that foundation of asking questions and figuring out what do people want? And I think one of the things that Catherine Nichols talked about that bringing um, the arts tell our stories and we need to have our artisans to share what's happening right now and help us interpret it, help us find some new ways. I, I also love what you talked about with the art gallery in that if you are an individual who is a creative, you need to remember that everyone who used to market you, everyone who you used to perform with or create for is struggling right now too and looking for partners and looking for people to bring some energy forward to bring that positive energy and say we're about to create something a little different so reaching out to those people that may currently not be able to help you in your business in the standard way looking at some of the ways that they are working outside of our region and being inspired by that and saying how can we do that here what can we do together here and looking at that Rolodex, if I can use the term, how would you right. approach those conversations and even find them, Anne? Well, it's just, I go back to, you know, marketing's changing all the time. Um, and I'm fascinated by uh, the impact that influencers have had in the last five years, because it's mystifying in one way, <laughs> but it really should be uh, telling us something about us as human beings <laughs> in another way. And it goes back to storytelling. Influencers are storytelling. They're selling their lifestyle. They're selling their story. They're selling their ideas. They're selling their brand. And they're inviting you into that world. And then they monetize that through their sponsorships and the, you know, the things you get to buy and all that. But if you think about your story, you have to think about how can I bring people into that? And maybe that's not something you ever thought of before or wanted to do before. But I guess the challenge for everybody is to say, how do we bring people in, right? And so it's, we've really evolved as a world. We're not a broadcast world anymore where one message goes out to this large group of people. People are looking for individual experiences shared with other individuals just like them, right? And so how do you tell that story? How do you bring people in and um, get them inside? There's nothing people love more than what I call the inside story either. Think about our fascination with how things are made. You could have a whole storytelling series on how you actually do what you do. And you'd have people who are who gravitate to that because they love to understand how things actually come to be. People love origin stories. People love to understand the backgrounds and all the needs and you know the emotional needs of the people who are involved. So there are many different ways of thinking about how do I draw people in and once that emotional connection happens that we talked about, that storytelling is that draw to that emotional connection. And then it may not be immediate. Influencers actually are impacting because they carry this power over a long period of time. It's not one sale, one sale, right? I, I'm, I'm sucked into this life and I'm now part of it. 
Okay. So again, I would encourage people to think longer term with those engagements and how they create relationships with all the people. In some ways, this has really accelerated um, some of our smaller businesses who have said, I don't have time to get to know the technology. Maybe next year, it's, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it when I have to. And, and now we're at the, I have to. And so actually understanding those influencers. And as Don said about knowing your message, if you if you're an influencer and you've never heard of one of our creatives and they say, hey, can you promote me? That's not necessarily going to create that relationship. However, if you are following that influencer, seeing the kinds of stories and information and products that they're sharing and, and raving about, then instead of just saying, hey, pick me too, you could actually talk about your message and about those stories and share the stories and, and really compose something along those lines to say, I've been following you. I love what you're posting. I think that your audience would love to hear about something I'm doing and share this story instead of having to make them do all the work for you. And Don, is, is there a process to that in the marketing world to say, here's how to connect with those influencers? Or is it really just building a relationship person to person? I, I believe it is building those relationships. It's it's having those conversations with those individuals, finding common ground or commonalities. Um, and it's it's so easy now. Uh, we, we have to be careful with um, technology that we don't get hung up on friends, um, but we need to create those meaningful relationships. And I think um, in the keynote, Catherine talked about uh, creating the, 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 I call it kumbaya, but creating that community where you're collaborating with each other and, uh, working toward uh, the same goal. So you're getting artists coming together and then they become each other's influencers. Uh, and and it, it's, it's, it's almost nuclear, if you will. Uh, and I love to see that when you get uh, a number of, of like-minded individuals, whether it's artists or um, somebody, as, as Anne had said, uh, an influencer outside of that, that group now becomes the influencer of interest because they've got something going on over here and they say the influencer comes to them says, well, I'd like to be a part of that too. I've seen that happen. Um, so creating interest uh, uh, both ways. Any way you can create a relationship meaningful uh, is, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you do it, uh, which goes back to, I'm an introvert, so now what? Um, uh, it's tough, uh, but- and it, 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 Another thing I think about is we think about competition in a different way. So again, a lot of the new Marketing is not necessarily about competition, but, but thinking about how to come together, right? And how to get mutual benefit from the power. And so the example I would use is people always worried about in the retail world, um, cannibalization of one you know, big retailer parking itself next to another big retailer. And the, in the Walmart learning years, what they found out is um, those businesses that were side by side that seemed to be competitors, it actually increased their business overall because the traffic was increased. So they both, there was mutual benefit, even though they look like they're in competition. So that's kind of, you got to really rethink some of those things about who's my competition versus you can band together and find collective opportunities with each other and say, how could we market together in a different way? How could we help each other with our list? Maybe I don't have a great email list, but I have something else to offer. And I could offer that up with somebody who does have a great email list. Could I have that conversation with you, right? So it's there's different things to trade in. I would say you have to look for what are the advantages you have and how do you leverage them? right? Not everybody has the same things and we all need different things. So think about it that way and say, what could I offer up to a, somebody who may be a competitor in an artistic world or in an organization world and say, how could they become a partner? And this is really the time to do that because business has shifted so much. You can be authentic and vulnerable with your competition and say, I'm struggling. Whereas in the past, we, we would always have that facade I think this is a really unique opportunity in business to be genuine, to talk about struggles and not feel like you will be judged or feel like people say, oh, you can't send someone to her because she's struggling in business, right? That facade has come down by necessity. So coming out of that fight, flight, freeze, appease <laughs> kind of mindset and into that ability to ask for help. 
um, asking for help from your circle. And I think also having someone like Don here from the Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Center, that is a resource. North Simcoe Community Futures is a resource. Uh, another one that the creative community has through Digital Main Street, as well as through Shop Here, which is directly for artisans and creatives, is free access to people who can help with that technology part. So if you're scared about COVID and you're scared about technology and you're trying to put that together, uh, how can how can they reach out for some of that techie, you know, markety, businessy stuff that Don apologizes for being? Because <laughs> Don, you're like, sorry, this sounds like business, but we are all in business. So that's important. Uh, you know, I think you identified some key ones there. The Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Center, um, the small business enterprise centers in the different regions. So the one in, in the business enterprise center in Barrie, which covers, um, you know, Oro, Aurelia, uh, Midland and such. And then you have the South Georgian Bay Small Business Enterprise Center. Um, and they're tied in very tightly with that digital Main Street squad. And they've uh, actually built that whole digital Main Street program out even farther uh, to help entrepreneurs of all stripes um, with that. I don't know how to use technology. How do I, how do I increase my SEO? How do I improve my website? Um, and again, uh, the organizations are there, uh, as, as you mentioned. Um, and I think I find when I meet new clients that come into any of these centers, uh, I didn't know you existed. And you know, look, it reflects on us and how we get our word out there and let people know that we exist. Uh, and, and when they do engage with us, um, it's uh, a wonderful experience. There's some grant programs out there, but really it's finding that mentorship uh, to, to guide you in the areas that maybe you're a little lean in. Um, and, and artists, they need to stay creative. I'll, you know, my own personal story, I, I, I was very creative, but the business took over my mind, as you can tell, uh, and it was less and less creative all the time. Um, and I found that to be very problematic until I actually moved away from uh, my, my previous lifestyle. Uh, and, and I thought, this is why I do what I do now, is I don't want other people to that, for that to happen to them. Um, and if, I wish there was organizations then as there is now. There are so many of them and so many wonderful people out there and share um, uh, and, and other individuals that, that help people um, with customer discovery, value proposition, technology, uh, all the areas that we we either don't know we don't know uh, or we we're kind of scared of or, or worried about. And sometimes it sound a little jargony. So having somebody explain how vividly important and relevant they are and how they are relevant to that particular person's business as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Anne. I was just going to say that um, building off your point about reaching out to people and saying, I may be struggling. I think that what I'm observing though, is that online, there is a spirit of generosity and all you have to do is ask a question and humans are stepping forth and saying, here's my thought, here's my idea, here's my approach. Um, and you know, where I live, there's all kinds of community groups on Facebook. And once you tap into those, people want to share their interest in life experience with you. So it, you, you don't even have to say whether you're struggling or not. It's more about generosity leads to more generosity as well. So think about what you have to offer and give to other people. Um, and when they do that, then you can also ask um, for something um, that you need as well. But reach out on networks. There's a million different types of networks. Um, and you don't have to be selling to get that. You can just be, again, it goes back to asking the questions. I also see, you said about being online or, or the technology. I'm seeing this at the dog park. People, yes, of course. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, yeah. you would walk. So it's and, get a dog is the answer. Oh, oh. It's just like walking along the trail. At, at, you know, it used to be people would look at each other and maybe nod, but now you're actually stopping and having conversations. And it's it's such a tremendous feeling. We I feel um, segregated because, you know, we all have to be hermits, but when I'm out and about, I find that uh, we're connecting um, people that wouldn't normally, you know, the guy down the road that would scowl at you now is smiling. And it's like, so tell me about yourself. It's wonderful. Uh, I think conversations are happening um, more and more and more organically now due to, um, due to our circumstances. 
Now, I do want to also come back to Anne again, because one of the challenges in COVID is that we are so isolated. So even if a creative person typically is more introverted, we're all suffering from that level of isolation that we do have. Uh, we aren't you know, going in and visiting and socializing in the ways that we used to. What is it imp what is important for people to realize and, and to do for themselves right now in order to, you know, first of all, acknowledge that it's happening, I think. And then how do you plan to come out of that? Because um, your understanding of how the brain works, how do we move out of that, you know, hunkered down survival mode? Yeah, it's really hard to kind of, as I say, try to get to that upshift and beyond the the, either the fear and or the emotional response to that fear. I, I see more and more people are recognizing that we're all experiencing this. This is the first, you know, I think moment um, that I've seen both professionally and personally that everybody's collectively experiencing the same thing and stopping and recognizing that. And so usually when I say to people, you know, you're not alone in this. Uh, people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other people just like you. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, no, everybody is right now just like you. So I think the first thing is we all have to stop and recognize that. Extroverts are struggling in this. So imagine, right? Introverts are struggling, extroverts are struggling, all humans are struggling. So I, you know, one thing I always think back to, just like I said about finding ambassadors who can talk about your brand, I look for what I call accountability buddies. And I seek out what I always call, I have my wise council of friends, right? And I pick different friends for different benefits. Um, and I make sure I think of them. So I would say to you, think about gathering a council, um, not formally, that like nobody who's on my council knows they're on my council. That's just the way I use them, right? And so, but I think about them as if I feel like I'm falling behind and not doing something that would be good for my business, then I call my wise work friend, right? If I feel like I'm not doing the right self-care things for me, I call my good wise self-care friend, right? And so I think that we all need to practice on this outreach um, that, when we are isolated, it is up to us to signal that outreach. And it may not be every day and it may not be all the time, but think about when you can do that and when you really need it and start to plan ahead for it. Nice. And I think when we talked about the opportunities that are showing up during this time, we've touched a little bit on that, that people are more open, that people are more giving, more compassionate because we are going through it all together. What other opportunities do you see for a creative community during this time? Other than I'm so sick of looking that, at that painting for eight months, it's time to buy a new one, which I think is legitimate, right? Uh, and, and actually leads to some ideas on that. What do you think, Don? Do you have some ideas on how to kind of step out of the box of here's how we did business and look at what are the opportunities in this? I think I'll take it from a different tack, if you don't mind. There's organizations that have had to reinvent themselves, um, like the Small Business Enterprise Centers. They're helping people in a different way. They're looking at um, how to help entrepreneurs, businesses, um, uh, the arts and culture, economic development in a different way. So there's a lot of noodling happening on, on how we can help different, um, different industries, different sectors, uh, culture and, and arts being uh, a pretty big main one. Tourism is another one that's getting um, hit. And how do, we, how do we help them get out of this uh, moving forward? And so that ideation, ideation labs um, are happening all over um, Southern and Mid Central Ontario at different accelerators and such for people. And so it's not just, the individuals that are responsible for reinventing themselves. It's the uh, industry support organizations that are coming together saying, here's that kumbaya thing where they're coming together and saying, okay, let's, let's figure out solutions that make sense. Uh, one of the outcomes was Digital Main Street. It was a program that started and uh, stopped in 2019, December, and uh, was refired because of COVID because we saw such an amazing need for it. Um, for people to to get online and, and be digital. Uh, when it comes to creating new products or services, I go straight back to talk to the customer. 
well, what, what solutions do they want? What, what life um, benefiting things would they need? You know, I, I miss going to a concert. Um, so Peter's players, if I may be so bold as uh, up in uh, Gravenhurst, I would go there half a dozen times a year he's reinvented himself he was doing some online concerts um he was doing outdoor things through the summer uh and and he was just listening to his customers it's like how do we come together again because we're like a family uh and and so they're surviving i don't know if they're thriving but they're surviving um but they listen to their customers to create something that worked for them um and i think they've started actually indoor things now where you can go and, and instead of having 80 people in a room, there's not that many, obviously. Um, but that's what people want. Listen to them. Yeah. And so that's really, even though we're not looking at a rapid fix, really, and, and I think that's one of the things that Anne's speaking of is not going to urgency, but to say, let's look at that long view. Let's let's give ourselves some breathing space take advantage of all the tools that are available to give us that breathing space as we switch from CERB to CRB. And, and there are still programs out there and more programs coming as Don says, pulling together to make sure that they're thinking through the current problem. It's, it is a longer view, but what could be the first step that if somebody said tomorrow morning, that was reassuring, that gave me some direction what first step would you like to see the people on this conversation do tomorrow morning? I always say it's not about the plan, it's about the planning. It's identifying basically what their objective is. You know, do they want to get back to uh, the exact same way? It's not going to happen. Um, you have to be a realist. Uh, so so what, does, what does success look like for them? What does survival look for, like for them? Uh, and then just start mapping that out. And then from there, building on it, I always look at it as one step at a time rather than I'm just going to go and I'm going to do this. Um, that, that process usually doesn't fare well. So starting right at the beginning, at those foundations, that's what I believe in. I think um, those two pillar foundations uh, of, of customer discovery and value proposition are critical, especially when you're reinventing yourself. Um, uh, so I think if they were to, uh, to go tomorrow, it's like, okay, what, what does success look like for me? What does survival look like for me? Um, and uh, start with that very seed of a plan and, and work from there. Nice. And what would you say to, as a response to that question? What would people do tomorrow morning or tonight as they're going to bed if we, we want to have them get a good night's sleep? I don't know. I think um, it goes back to the if um, getting to outreach. So maybe if you just leave tonight and say, who are five people that I think I could learn something from? I could learn something about my customer from or I could learn about how they're shifting and pivoting or i could learn something so really just kind of start your own market research um and those relationships may lead to things that you can't imagine and it's always about the first step i think that in all self-help we're told you know if you try to try to swallow the whole thing it you know you're going to go right back into anxiety mode again so i always say you know what's the first step if I just did that first step, where would that take me? I think by picking five people you could talk to, um, you'd be on your, you know, well on your way to learning more and being able to pivot and change in this time. I think to this time of year, um, we've been so tired of being home <laughs> and we face snow is coming. I know it, you don't believe it today because it's been so beautiful and we've got a gorgeous week of weather here, but snow is coming. The winter holidays are coming as well. And your customers have been sitting at home, maybe getting out to restaurants a little bit, not doing the travel they used to do, doing a lot more staycation, a lot more hunkering down. We have a fellow in my networking group who he does kitchens and bathrooms. And he said, you would be amazed at how many people have realized they hate their kitchen. You know, <laughs> 10 years of the same kitchen and now they know they hate their kitchen and business is booming. And tapping into that recognition that as people are sitting in their home as they are trying to be inspired about what does date night look like now? What does cultural expression look like now? 
how do we stimulate our minds and stimulate our souls when we're sitting at home with the same people day after day after day? Mm. And, and that might be an opportunity that is being facilitated around you. I know that our Economic Development Corporation of North Simcoe is looking at who is selling online local and compiling a list of those local Etsy and Shopify shops. So you need to know those people are out there trying to empower you into the new season because so many people really rely on that Christmas season or the winter holiday season to drive sales up, to do those more exciting purchases, to go to the events, to go and experience things. And they spend a lot more at that time of year. So that's one example. The Chamber of Commerce in North Simcoe here, our Southern Georgian Bay Chamber of Commerce, they're putting together something with the Wise Men's Club that is very similar about doing a little passport of shopping locally. So I think keeping an eye out for some of those things as well as creating your own makes a great deal of sense. We have the I love my local.ca campaign going on. We have a way to connect through the culturalalliance.ca as well. So there's so many opportunities to reach for help. And I think standing in your value not just your value proposition, but knowing your value yourself and giving yourself that confidence to say, people still need me. Right? And, and I think that value proposition, Don, is it's, it's such it's a jargony term, but that's where that's found, isn't it? I believe it is. Yeah. I think what you're talking about is what Catherine talked about, and I started my presentation yeah. with um, how the creative is so absolutely critical um, in our social fabric. It, it, it's an economic driver, it builds community, it connects people. Um, and because we've been unplugged, I guess, um, man, the market is ripe. Um, people are looking for experiences and that. I, I think it, it's, it's knowing your value and then creating that value proposition and people are gonna, I, I believe the marketplace, the, the, the population, the community will sit up and say, I want that, um, if it's done right. Yeah. And uh, we had a, a presentation at council last night from the Southern Georgian Bay Chamber of Commerce, and their engagements on their posts are so high right now. People are engaging much more. Whether you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce or not, they're promoting you. They, are, they, they share the love, right? That, that you can reach right out. Generosity. Yeah. yeah. And reach out to Kathy Kate and say, Kathy, here's what I'm doing. I'd love it if you could reshare it. And she'd be like, absolutely. Let's get that out to people. So looking for those opportunities, asking for the help and having that trust, recognizing that message from Anne that, that we are more compassionate and giving now. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time we have for our discussion among our panelists. I would like to again acknowledge our gratitude to the sponsors of this conference, the sponsors for this evening's session again, Newton Street Art Barn and the Midland Cultural Center. And again, express our gratitude to Simcoe County Tourism for their sponsorship of this conference and Rogers TV for their technical support as we are about to move into the discussion with our, our attendees as well. Goodbye for now. <laughs>